In this video, I'm going to show you how to use some Dollar Tree frames coupled with some crystals that you can buy on Amazon to make this elegant and beautiful chandelier. Well, if you want to learn how I did it, follow me. What's up glue dots? I'm Elaine the Midnight Crafter. I have put together this chandelier today using mostly Dollar Tree frames. I'm pretty sure all of them are, but the original one was made using wood frames, which are quite a bit more expensive, so I tried to figure out how I could do a less expensive version of the same thing. The crystals I purchased on Amazon for a really good price. Originally, as you'll see in the tutorial, I made this chandelier to be hanging by chains, and what I discovered in the end, which I will show you at the very, very end of the video, so stick through to the end, how you can flush mount it to the ceiling over an existing light, and it looks beautiful. I mean, absolutely beautiful. So check that out at the end, because I really think that that does much more justice than hanging by the chains. All the items you'll need are listed down below in the description box, as well as a link to win a really cute little bling owl keychain, and I do that drawing the first of every month. Well, if you wanna to get to this tutorial and see how I did this, hit that thumbs up button and we will get this party started. So first of all, we're gonna start with this because it is the hardest part of the entire project. So what we wanna do is we wanna be removing this mirror out here from the center. And they've used some pretty good glue for Dollar Tree, I'll tell you, this is one tough little mirror here. So the back side, if you peel off the sticker, there is a hole to the mirror, but I found it impossible to get the mirror out without breaking it. So please put goggles on, use gloves. I use this little uh, screwdriver to pry it out of there, but it will break. So put it in a garbage can and work away from yourself so no shards of mirror fly into your face. And I'm gonna work on getting this mirror out of here and then I'll be right back. Okay, so don't worry too much about getting these center pieces out because we are gonna be cutting this entire center out to leave this just a frame with no flat part. If you would like to, you can use an X-Acto knife to do that. Now I will tell you, this plastic of this frame is really hard stuff. So it's gonna take some finagling and some effort to get it out using your X-Acto knife. I'm actually gonna be using my hot knife for this. And I'll tell you too, even with the hot knife it, it took me a little bit of effort so don't you know just take your time at it we want to try to keep this outer rim intact as much as possible and just be left with only the framed part and cut this whole inner circle out now just a tip if you are using the hot knife the idea is that I want to keep this frame part as nice as possible. By cutting at an angle, we're able to not worry about hitting it with the hot part and melting any or jabbing into this outer part of the frame. When you're finished, you should have a piece that looks like this. And we're gonna do this to two of these frames. Next, what we're gonna be doing is disassembling our other frames, and this is very easy. So using this little screw set from Dollar Tree, I'm just unscrewing these little tabs because we are going to need to take them out anyway and removing all four of them so that we can remove the backing and the glass and just have our two empty frames just like this. So, and then with your larger mirror, which I believe I got this one, it was either at Dollar Tree or a 99 cent store, I can't remember completely, but we should be able to very easily be able to push on those tabs and remove the mirror. Now that all of these are ready to go, we're gonna be painting them. I'm actually going to be using this Waverly white chalk paint and I'm going to be painting them with that because I feel like it will give them um, kind of a more dull finish and then a little more of that rustic look that I'm going for, sort of a shabby chic combination. You don't have to paint the back side of any of these because we are going to be 
attaching them to each other. Okay, so I've got all of the front sides painted with actually two coats. And I did say you don't have to paint the back side, but you know what, there is one part on the back side you are gonna need to paint. And that is this very inner rim here, because when you put, eventually we're gonna be putting these two pieces together and that inner rim there is going to show a little bit. So just paint that part and also this inner rim here on the small frames as well. Next, what we're gonna be doing is adding on our crystals, but we have to make the holes for that first. How we're gonna do that is using this little hot tool. I have left a link down below for that. Um, it's not exactly this one. It is the wood burning slash hot knife tool, which I think is a better option because I have a hot knife and a, this soldering iron. And the one I left the link for is actually a combination of both, so it's even better for you. Okay, so once this gets nice and hot, you're gonna go into the different spots where you wanna put the crystal in, run that ring through, and we're gonna be making that hole at the first indent closest to the circle here and go all the way through, but you don't need to make the hole very big because you do want to have plenty of substantial plastic left to hold that. It works really quickly and really easily and you just touch it to it and goes right through. I'm gonna go ahead and make those on each of these four points here and then I'm gonna do it on the places in between and use this little point as a guide. Now for this piece here, we're going to be placing the hole right at this upper rim part. So kind of right in the middle of it. Now I'm gonna be doing it again at the four crisscross points and then at the spots in between. Now for this piece here, we have automatically have this little inner ledge that we're gonna be doing. And you wanna go a little bit to the inside of that ledge because again, we want to have enough of a ledge so that it doesn't eventually break through. Now, because there's this little lip here, you have to make sure that you're kinda of going next to that lip. Now on this piece, I've done the four crisscross points and I'm gonna be doing two in the in-between just because I'd like to add a little extra crystal. You know, a little extra bling is not a bad thing. So kind of eyeball it and figure out where you want these placed. As always, make sure you're doing this in a well-ventilated room because there is some smokiness to it and you don't want all those chemicals. You don't want to breathe those all in. Okay, so we're going to make the eight holes on this piece and eight holes on this piece. But then on our larger piece, we actually have 12 holes. So one of our two pieces here that I said has eight holes on it. The other one is gonna to need to have 12 holes so that it will match up with these when we put our crystals to hold the whole thing together. And again, we're gonna be doing them in the same place, just inside of that first ridge. There's something oddly satisfying about melting a hole in this, the way it feels. I don't know, it's just really cool. <laughs> Okay, so now we're gonna start attaching our little teardrop pieces to the bottom of our small frame. And if you haven't used these before, they're really easy. It's just like a keychain. It's a split ring. And then I recommend doing this from the back side of the frame. It's just a little easier because you have this ledge to help you out. So split the ring and slide it on that ledge just like that. And then I would highly recommend a small pair of needle nose pliers just because it's really hard to get your fingers in there. Help that piece, the end piece, get into the hole there and work it around and then adjust it as necessary. And there you go. So I'm gonna go ahead and put on the rest of those and then show you what we're gonna do with the other pieces. So our bottom piece is all done right here and has all the crystals attached to it. Now the top piece of the small frame, you will also need to make the eight holes in as well. And you're gonna go again through the same spot, right through that top ridge part. 
Now we're going to set aside our part with the teardrop crystals and work on the top frame that we just put the holes in. And we're going to be using our chain crystal and using, depending on how long and how far apart you want your different levels to be, it will depend on how long you make this chain. I'm going to do mine about six crystals long and you do need to have a link on each end of the crystal chain and we will be attaching those into this frame the same way we attached the other ones into this one. Now we're going to be working on connecting our top and our middle piece together and for that we're going to need two strands of eight crystals on the chain, four strands of seven crystals, and six strands of six crystals. So I've already put one with the six crystals. In the shorter side, these three holes here and these three holes here, we're going to be putting the six strands and then working our way around to the seven strands here and the eight strands on the farthest reaching corners here. Or I shouldn't say there is no corner, but on the farthest reaching part. Okay, all the pieces are attached now to the very top piece. And these are now going to be attached to our middle piece with the 12 holes in it. The longest ones obviously are going to be reaching the farthest and connecting to the underneath holes. Okay, this is what it looks like so far and you can see kind of where we're going with this. We're going to put that aside for right now and we're going to work on our other middle piece and our part of our bottom piece here. So this is the top part of the very bottom hanging level. So we're going to be attaching these strands from here directly to this one the same way we did with this here. Now we're going to start attaching some of our pieces together and get this chandelier looking more like a chandelier. Are you getting value out of my channel and out of this project? If so, give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to join the Glue Dot family, we'd sure love to have you subscribe. Now what we're going to do is take and attach our pieces that are like each other. And the way we're going to be doing that is using E6000 and hot glue together. You're going to line up your pieces so they match up perfectly and then we're going to be gluing them together. This is going to be a little challenging with all these crystals in the way, but we will make it happen. <laughs> so all of these surfaces up above here, for the most part, we're going to be using the Gorilla Glue or E6000 because it has a stronger long-term hold and we do want everything to keep together because we have some weight on this and we're just going to use our hot glue to set it immediately. So take some time and go around and get this glue, this more permanent um, holding glue in place. And the more area that you put it on, the better it will be because there, as I said, there is some weight with all these crystals. So you do want to make sure you put enough on there so the whole thing doesn't fall apart one day. <laughs> Now if a little bit of it shows on the outside of the connecting crease here once we get them put together, don't worry because we are going to be covering that up with some bling wrap, that seam there. Now if you have clips to clip this part together with, I didn't have any clips large enough, you want to go ahead and clip this around because you want it to be really tightly glued together. I'm just going to try and lay this out as best I can and put some weight on top of it. And these, all these crystals are kind of in the way, but try and finagle it as best you can here to get this to lay flat because we're also going to be doing the same process right now with this piece attaching on to, and gluing it in the same way. I used combination. I already have my E6000 on there and I'm quickly going over with my hot glue just to add a few spots on there, but got to work fast because otherwise it'll cool off. Now again, if you have some clips, go ahead and clip this together so that everything can dry really snugly together. And we're going to have to let this dry 24 hours because there's definitely a lot of weight on here from all these gorgeous sparkly glittered crystals. <laughs> 
So I went to use my chain. I was gonna spray paint it. And this is the chain from Dollar Tree that you can purchase either on the baskets or separately. But what I realized is this only has three. I wasn't thinking about that at the time. So you would want to purchase two of these and make sure that you take the chain from one of them and put it on here so that you actually have four chains hanging down. So because I'm crafting my stash and I cannot get to Dollar Tree to look for another one of these, I happen to have this 16, number 16 jack chain. So I am gonna be cutting four pieces so that I have. But again, you can purchase the other chain from Dollar Tree. So I'm gonna take out and spray paint this silver, and while that's drying, then we will get back to working on the other part of our project. While we're at it spray painting our chain, we're also gonna spray paint the sticks that are gonna be used to hold the light in place. And these are some different options you can use. These here are the giant craft sticks from Walmart. They come in a package. It's a really great value. You can use them for a lot of things, so I do recommend these. And they fit perfectly across the oval frame, as does this free paint stick stirrer from Home Depot. So that's a free option that you can choose. Or if you don't have or like either of those options, you can also use the craft sticks from Dollar Tree. They don't fit the long way of the oval, but they do fit across, so those will work as well. I'm gonna go ahead and get these spray painted silver, and then we're gonna be working on the trim around the frames. Okay, so working on trimming the edges, we don't have to trim this one because it doesn't have connected pieces, but you can see that our other pieces here where the seam is, it's not the prettiest. So we're gonna work on covering that up. And what I'm gonna do is use a single strand of bling wrap. I'll leave a link for this down below. I have the huge roll of it. You can see it's even wider, but I've used this a few times. And we're gonna cut them into single strands using our hot glue we're gonna go around and just cover up all of those seams. We're gonna go back to our handy dandy little hot tool and we're gonna be making the holes that are gonna hold the hooks that hang the chain. So find your exact halfway point and this is really important because you wanna make sure this is hanging in a balanced way. Make sure also when you make your hole that you go down far enough to again allow plenty of thickness so that the chain has something really sturdy to hold on to and that it doesn't just break through eventually. I painted both sets of craft sticks and what I did decide is though these do reach perfectly across here, I do like the idea of having one solid piece instead of two. But either way, and again, use what you have. I'll be using my hot glue as well as my E6000. Then you're gonna take your push light and you guys, when I say I am crafting my stash, I am not kidding. Look at this poor thing. I have hot glued it together. It is cracking. I tried, I mean, it is falling apart, but I'm using it and I had it, I, it's just a hot mess. Anyway, what we're gonna be doing is adding glue. It does have this little adhesive sticker on the back when you get it, but mine is shot. And so I'm just gonna be hot gluing this directly onto the underneath side of the stick here so that I will be able to access, still access the batteries and still be able to use the light. And yes, of course, you could glue this on the stick before you glue the stick into place. <laughs> Probably would. The last thing to do will be to attach the chain. And one thing to notice here is that the side chains are going to be longer than the center ones. We do want it to be even so that it's supported well and doesn't start to bow. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove those extra links and then guess what, guys? We're done. You get to see this up and looking beautiful. If you'd like to mount this to your ceiling over an existing light, what you would do, instead of making your burn holes here for the chain, you would do them on the underneath side 
right over here on each of the four sides where you had put your chain. Also, you would not have the need for the craft stick or the light that is here that we put in if you're gonna make it into a chandelier. If you know that you're gonna be doing this, you wanna do this step before you get this all put together. Use this frame, hold it up, it'll be much easier for you. Once you put this up to your ceiling, you're gonna decide where those holes are, put a nail through so that you can make a little marking in the ceiling so you know exactly where to drill your holes. Once you have the holes drilled in the ceiling, you're gonna use a plastic anchor mount. You can get these at any hardware store, which usually has a screw that fits exactly to the size depending on the anchor mount that you have. You will put these anchor mounts directly into the hole that you drilled, and then you hold your frame up and you'll be putting the screw through the frame and directly screwing it into the anchor mount. This way, it's gonna hold it perfectly in place. You may wanna to touch up the little screw heads that are silver though with your white paint so that it doesn't show at all. And there you have a beautiful, budget-friendly, elegant chandelier-like cover.